This blowout is insane. This is my absolute favorite way to blow out my hair with a round brush, the good old fashioned way with no round brush blow dryer, nothing fancy, just a good old round brush and some curl clips. So come along and let me show you how it's done. Okay, so we are gonna start with product. It's always best to put your product in your hair while your hair is still relatively wet. You don't wanna let your hair dry for too long before your product goes in, especially hydrating products like leave-in conditioner and whatnot. Your hair doesn't need to be dripping wet, but you don't wanna walk around and let it air dry too much or dry in the towel for too long when you're gonna use product. You wanna get that product in there while your hair is still fairly wet for it to work its best. So take it out of my microfiber towel it's only been in there a few minutes, just so I could touch up my makeup. I'm gonna shake it out so it's not in a big clump. And then we are gonna start with my leave-in. This is leave-in conditioner, it's got heat protection. It is the Miracle Creator 20 by Matrix. It's their multitasking treatment, so it's great for shine, hydration, um, smoothness, heat protection, detangling. It's one of my favorite products and one that I use on literally every single client before I start to finish off their hair and most of my clients purchase and love this product. So this is a highly recommended leave-in and you can find it in my Amazon storefront. So I just like to generously spray it through. Obviously if you have fine and thin hair like me, you don't want to do too much. Uh, if you find that you use a product like this and then your hair is feeling greasy or weighed down after it, you've definitely just used too much. You can use a fair bit of this one without it doing that, but if you overdo it, your hair definitely will start to feel um, weighed down and gross. All right, because my hair has been dry lately, I did wash and condition today with the Matrix Food for Soft shampoo and conditioner. It's the one I use when my hair is feeling really dry. It is insanely hydrating and smoothing and it does not weigh down my fine hair and then I am going to use the um, multi-use hair oil for all dry hair from the food for soft line as well I'm gonna use that just on my ends so that when I do my blowout I'm getting a nice smooth finish um, and again, this is like a serum oil product that is super lightweight. I don't use a lot, just a couple drops there in my hand. Rub it through my hands and I'm just gonna put it on the ends and the mids of my hair. And as long as you don't overdo it, this one is super lightweight and just leaves the perfect shine and softness even if you don't have thick, coarse hair. Last step, when you're doing a blowout, you always wanna use your volumizing product because that is what's gonna help you not only get a ton of volume, but it is going to help you hold a ton of volume. So today we're gonna to use the Amica Plus Size Perfecting Body Mousse. It's one of my favorites when I'm doing a round brush blowout. We're gonna use a good amount, probably like an egg size clump. I always like to run it through my hands so that it's better distributed. You don't ever want to plop the entire chunk on top of your head because then you're going to get too much in one spot. Just everywhere. I concentrate it mostly on my roots, but then I do run it through everywhere because you do want that hold factor it's got to get all over your hair. Now we're going to start to blow dry. I always rough dry before I go in with my round brush. You're going to dry your hair until it's mostly dry, but still a little bit damp. And you want to make sure you get your roots mostly dry because it is harder to get in close to your roots when you're round brushing, especially when you're first starting out. So making sure you get mostly the roots dry and the ends are just slightly damp still. You don't want your hair 100% dry before you go with your round brush, but you want it fairly dry. I'm not going to be brushing my hair before I start to rough dry. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I don't. It stretches out the hair more and I find I get more volume when I don't brush my hair first. Plus your hair is weaker when it's wet so you're more likely to cause breakage. If you've never tried this technique of just starting to blow dry your hair, as long as you've used a detangling leave-in conditioner, you will be surprised at how much of the tangles fall out because if I try to brush through my hair right now, like it is very tangly. So some people are like, there's no way that that's all gonna come out, but I promise it does. Okay, 
Okay, now we're mostly dry, so we are gonna brush it now before we go in with a round brush because the round brush will rip any tangles really easily. So you wanna make sure all tangles, if there is any left, are completely brushed out before you start to round brush your hair. I always use a detangling brush, like a wet brush, and your hair shouldn't be very tangly at this point, but you just wanna get out any little bits of tangles that there are before we start the round brush process. So now what you're gonna need for the blowout is obviously your blow dryer. You're going to need a round brush, of course. Um, I like to use a medium sized round brush. You can see it's not, not super, super big. It's definitely smaller than when I use my blowout brush. You can see this is a large oval shape. This one is quite small. In comparison, probably about half the size of my blow dry brush, but this is my preferred size for a blowout on finer hair. Big enough to give volume, but small enough that you still get like a nice flip with the hair. And this one is from Olivia Garden. It is the ceramic plus ion brush. Um, and what you want to look for if you don't get the Olivia Garden one, you want something that's ceramic, has the metal teeth, in my opinion, are going to do a better job than a boar bristle brush is going to be a little different. And in my opinion, those ones are harder to work with. So one of these with the like metal spikies instead of, or metal bristles they're called instead of the boar bristles a ceramic finish to help smooth your hair and ionic is great if you can get one because it being ionic helps to reduce any frizz or static in your hair the other thing you want is some curl clips um, you don't have to do this part but clipping up each section while you wait to take it all out in the end is going to make the shapes of the blowout last a lot longer, allowing everything to set while it's warm and completely cool down in that shape, as opposed to just dropping everything immediately from the brush, will get you a better result and a longer lasting result. So these are curl clips. You can get them at most beauty suppliers. I will put them in my Amazon storefront as well. They're just these little kind of duckbill clips with the two little prongs, and they are specifically designed to do what we're gonna do with them today and they work really well, they're super easy to clip in, and they generally don't leave much, if any, of a dent in the hair, and if they do, it's a super soft dent that kinda falls away really easily. Super important in a blowout is to work with sections, so we're gonna work from the bottom up, so we're gonna take, sort of from the top of my ears down is gonna be my first section, and I'm just gonna clip the rest of the hair out of the way, and then I'm just gonna separate this into two sections sort of down the middle of my head. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now you can blow dry under, or you can blow dry out. Totally your call. Honestly, whatever feels the most natural and easiest to you, that's what I would suggest going with. And I'm not gonna lie, I do find blowing out your hair with a round brush a lot trickier than just doing it with the round brush blow dryers, even for me, and I do it with a brush of all my clients, no problem. Um, but I do find it harder on myself because it's a completely different skill doing it on other people than doing it on yourself, and I don't do it on myself very often. So don't fret if you struggle, totally normal, and it does take practice for it to feel like everything flows and you know where to put your hands and where to put the blow dryer, but as long as you follow a few simple steps, you should get good results. So the few things that you wanna make sure that you definitely do, you wanna make sure that the piece is not tangled before you start. So if you did not fully brush your hair before, you can make sure you brush each section just to make sure it is fully smooth. You also want to make sure that when you're using your brush, you're creating tension. So you shouldn't just be doing this. You want to really get it in there and they, you should feel pull. And I know we've all been to the hairstylist and you feel how hard they're pulling, right? You want to make sure you're not just doing this, just softly going through the hair. It is that tension and that stretching of the hair that is going to get you the shape. I mean, it's already smoothing my hair out and I haven't even added heat yet. So you wanna make sure you're really getting tension as you go and wrapping that brush. Now, I know everyone gets afraid they're gonna tangle their hair. This is how you tangle your hair. You start rolling it when you're here. I don't even wanna do it like that because I'm terrified I'll wrap my hair in. Don't start rolling it when you're here. Pulling down towards the ends as you roll and then roll up towards the base. Don't start rolling in when you're in the middle 
You're gonna get everything tangled, wrapped around the brush in, e in, e in unequal sections, which is gonna create knots and tangles around the brush, and then you're not gonna be able to get it out easily. So make sure that you are pulling down as you roll, and then you can roll it up toward your head. So let's start. Now this can be a time consuming process because you're gonna do one section, you're gonna let it sit there for you know, 20, 30 seconds, then you're gonna slide out the brush and I like to kind of unroll it like that instead of just pulling it straight out. Not only is it easier to do that way, but it's just better for your hair. And then you're gonna wrap it around your fingers, get it up against the base of your head, take one of your curl clips and you're just gonna pinch right into the middle of the curl against your head and you're gonna leave it like that. The hair should feel nice and warm still as you're rolling it. You don't want to let it cool down before you get it all rolled up and clipped if possible. But also don't rush because it's when we rush that we make mistakes and things fall out and we get frustrated. So take your time, but try not to let it cool. Next section, I'm just going to take about two-ish inches of hair again all the way around the back. I'm just going to double check that it is all brushed out. Just being mindful of those curls you've clipped under. So as you can see, these pieces around my face, I like to blow dry away from my face. If you find that too tricky, it's totally fine to blow dry them towards your face as well. It won't be a huge deal. It's just the look that I prefer, um, especially if you have shorter pieces around the front. If you don't, it's really not gonna make big of a difference if you just have long hair. But if your hair's a bit shorter on the front, you have layers or curtain bangs, it definitely works best to do the front sections down and away from your face. But again, go with whatever works the easiest for you because we wanna be successful here. Because my hair is mostly dry once I do this, I don't have to spend a lot of time on each section. If your hair is a little bit more wet, you might have to pull through the section a few times before um, you get it to set because you want obviously the piece completely dry when you're wrapping it up like this. You don't want it damp anymore. So it might take you a few times to figure out like the perfect amount of dampness that you want. Um, but if you do find that it's still wet, you'll just kind of, you know, go through it like this with the blow dryer and the brush a few times before you wrap and set it. If you don't have clips and you still want to cool the hair and set, you can wrap it like this and then do the cool setting on your blow dryer for 10-15 seconds to let it all cool down as much as possible before you let it go and that should help it set a little better than if you just drop the hot curl down all the way but my preference is to just pin everything as we go do the top section Depending on how thick your hair is, if your hair is on the thicker side, you might need to do another section, but because my hair is relatively thin, I can do this all in one section, no problem.
would suggest letting this sit as long as you possibly can or at least until it completely feels cool that none of these little bundles feel warm at all anymore. If you are a hairspray girly, you could definitely give it a spritz at this point um, before you take everything out. I am not a hairspray girly. I find it far too heavy for my fine hair. I will sometimes add some dry texture spray or powder when I'm done if I want to, but I tend to stay away from hairspray when it comes to movable styles. I usually only use hairspray when I'm like doing a slick ponytail or something like that. But these are ready, so let's take them out. I like to start at the bottom where I started putting them in. if your hair is short to mid length you likely won't get a ton of curl from a blowout unless you have super cooperative hair that loves to curl but most people with fine hair that hair is sort of mid length to shorter are going to more get flip and wave as opposed to longer hair you will definitely likely get a bit more curl and bounce on the ends so then we are just going to shake that out I try not to touch it too much Lots of fullness, lots of flip, an awesome blowout. I'm not going to say it's easy because honestly, blowing out your hair with a round brush is harder than it looks, but it is worth it in my opinion. It is the longest lasting blowout that I can give myself by far. It lasts longer than any other way of blowing out my hair. And I just love the results every single time, no matter how I part my hair, it just looks amazing. You the back because I know everyone always wants to see the back but honestly the back's not anything special it's just the back of my hair but you can see I have a lot of layers in my hair so that also gives extra flip if your hair is just long what you're gonna get is more of just like a nice shape around your face and a bit of movement on your ends if you don't have a lot of layers I like to do styles like this and that's why I get quite a bit of layers and texturizing throughout my hair but if you do have thin fine hair and you want a lot of layers and texturizing it is important to find a hairstylist who understands your hair type otherwise they can end up thinning out your hair and making it look terrible so do get yourself a hairstylist who understands your hair type if you want to ask for a lot of layers like I get I hope that helps. I hope you give this a try and I hope that you remember that doing something like this is going to take a lot of patience and a lot of practice and it will be worth it in the end if you stick to it, but it might not be something that comes quickly and easily and you should not fret if it doesn't work out the first few times, but the only way you're going to get better is if you keep on doing it. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos because I do post three every single week and I post every day on my shorts or on my Instagram and my TikTok and you should definitely follow me on Instagram to see my stories because there is a lot going on the stories that doesn't go on in my videos. Leave me a comment, let me know what else you'd like to see or just say hi and don't forget you can check out my Amazon storefront for all the products I use and I have a video up here as well where you can see how to do a blowout with the round brush blow dryer. If you find this technique too hard, you might find that one a little easier to start with and you can check out that video. Thanks so much guys, bye.